friends. So last year I vowed to not grow any brassicas this year because I had a huge in harlequin bug infestation. And so this was just um, some seeds that I kind of emptied out my seed box and was cleaning it out and I dumped out everything out of the box. And this grew itself, volunteered itself. And I've just been plucking some leaves off of here now and then and I've been giving it to my chickens. It's really, really big. Over here I have some Icelandic poppies that I grew and it looks really, really pretty. And some of these, um, the petals fell off because I just barely removed a dead, dried up cilantro stem and it kind of knocked off some of the blossoms but it is so whimsical and beautiful it's gorgeous I love it so much it's beautiful now the temperature has been just kind of like June gloom all of um, April May and June so things that like hot weather are not doing too well such as my chili peppers. They're just now starting to pop up. But the ones that I planted since February, late February, and I covered it and everything, out of all the plants, there are just a couple. So there's one here, one there. That's my biggest one. This might be one. There's one here and one there. As far as what they may be, I have no idea because they may have, the seeds may have moved a little bit as the plants were being watered. Over here my hollyhock is blooming. It's looking really gorgeous. Love it so much. I love that there are so many blooms all along the height of the plant. This was my second, or actually my third, sunflower to bloom all over the place all over the place and this is my overwintered um, eggplant I have two here from last year I bought it for about 450 each plant and it's making fruit multiple fruit this year I'm growing tons of sunflowers so there there way back there as you can see it's, it has tons of blooms so I'm going to take the seed from that and grow even more sunflowers over there over there just everywhere this rose is so gorgeous look at this pair of beautiful blooms wow some more beautiful whimsical hollyhocks that will attract hopefully a lot of hummingbirds and bees and butterflies and pollinators along with yet another sunflower. Love it. Love it so much. So my plants that I transplanted just a couple weeks ago, this is the chocolate striped tomato. Um, it was about yay tall and now it's like twice as tall and it started leaning falling over so I took some of these stakes um, and I'm propping it up and at some point I'll maybe um, pin it to it. Um, I wish I had taller things, but tomato cages are quite expensive, so I'll see what I can do to keep these alive. I might just prop them against a trellis or something, some other trellis. I had a pot of soil that kind of was like small like this, and it had, it looked like it had nothing in it, and so I dumped the contents out over here, and it actually had can calla lily bulbs so here they come they're coming up four different plants one two oh maybe even more one two three four five six plants that's so awesome and they're right next to my strawberries that I grew in the ground now I don't like growing things in the ground because um, a lot of critters and bugs and birds get to the 
the strawberries before I do. So every time I go to pluck some, most of them have holes in them already. So then I end up giving them to the chickens. Hi friends, this is why I love to grow chrysanthemums. Look at how beautiful this is. It's chock full of flowers, almost 50% flowers to 50% foliage ratio. It's gorgeous. And I have some calendula growing over here, a mixture of perennials. There I have some armeria. Um, I should probably deadhead these. Hopefully it'll make um, new blooms from them. Let me try to do that now. Just try to grow as many things as I can. I just want a really lush, beautiful garden. And um, I have some roses here. Uh, ooh, I should. I really need to get in here and clean up and deadhead things. I don't often have the chance to as I work, um, but I try to do my best. I'm really loving this so much. It's so bright. It's so beautiful. Back to the toma tomato plants. Look, they are now making lots and lots of flowers. So I'm hoping to have some tomatoes because right now my chili peppers, they are just not doing well at all. And I, I barely have any chili pepper plants. And I wanted to make this year um, full of chili peppers because I wanted to try very many different kinds because I always season my foods with chili. Here's another calendula plant that grew really quickly. It's one of the first things to bloom in this garden and it's like that yellowish muted yellow orange color for this one. And then I have one that's a brighter orange I'll show you. Here's my really bright orange calendula and it has grown quite large as well. Starting from a tiny little one stem thing that had only one flower and two flowers. And then over here I have a uh, mum that's ready to bloom pretty soon and it's a darker purple than the one we just saw. As you can see it made a lot of buds so it's going to make a lot of flowers. Another thing I'm really loving is these Gerbera daisies. Look at how gorgeous this is. It's I love this color too, this pink. And then I have this other one, the Gerbera, I think they call it Jamesonii, but it's like a bright, rich, creamy, buttery, orange, yellow. I saw, also have this mum right here. It's going to be a yellow one, and it has gotten so lush. It's probably four times the size um, that it was when I planted it into the ground. And same here. This is another one. I believe it is a pink one. Uh, I've long since forgotten, but they come back every year, and guys, these are the best plants. They're hardy. They make lots of flowers. They repel the most number of different kinds of pests. They're, they're really wonderful to grow. Here is my lovely hot pink rose. It's really hard to see, but it's like really gorgeous. It's like a, it's like a hot orange, really. Here I've got some thornless uh, blackberries and it's been kind of slowly spreading but I don't care because this kind does not have thorns and I love that because I'm really really sick and tired of getting poked with the thorny variety however the thorny variety I have in some pots and this morning I harvested about five and I ate them in my last video, I had transplanted this zucchini into the ground. It was just a tiny thing, and I mean, in just like a couple weeks, it has grown so big. I love it. So it had a sister plant that I gave to my siblings, so I just decided only to grow one because it usually provides enough food. And I'm planning on making lots of zucchini bread this year, and maybe just roasting them or something like that, but I love it. Now, these Kajari melons get sun in, in part of the day, but probably not as much sun as it should get. So it didn't grow as quickly as the zucchini did. However, it is growing. It's twice the size it was when I put it. 
I think this is a Buddleia and I'm not sure because it's the first time that it grew this tall. I planted it last year. I ordered it from um, Bluestone Perennials and it's a perennial plant and I'm really excited if it does bloom beautiful hot pink flowers here. And amongst these, oh yeah, I think it is a Buddleia. You guys tell me. And then I have this other one that had like little little bell-shaped pink flowers and now the flowers are fading so but it was really really pretty and over there I have some Shasta daisies look at how gorgeous they are and then um, I have way over there uh, my hookara planted it in the shade I believe it's a shade plant and I have a couple of a different variety of mums that flower in the fall. And then not everything is sunshine and roses and happiness. Um, even though I have a lot of thriving plants, I have a lot of uh, pest pressure. I have a lot of squirrel problems. So they practically decimated my pineapple guava tree. This was a bushy, bushy, beautiful plant with lots of flowers and everything is practically dying and the branches are broken in multiple 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 areas and it's because the squirrels climb on here and break the branches i'm not really sure if they're chewing on these flowers or or what they're after but they're always pestering me in my garden but um I guess I should be happy because they're not really getting to my other fruits so far, but they, they probably will because every year they get to my pomegranates before I can. So although I had to tear down and pull out a uh, borage way, here's another borage that, trans, um, that self seeded itself and here's a sunflower that's kind of blocking my new cornway, corn row, and the corn is growing so tall. I think it's been three weeks or more since I put the corn in here, and it's looking good. I had given some corn to my siblings. I really hope that they do plant it and get to enjoy some corn this year. Corn is getting expensive. It used to be like a quarter each or whatnot and now it's getting to be like a dollar each. Anyway, we um, helped ourselves to some donut peaches and they are slightly on the crunchy side but they are sweet and they're really good and juicy. So they're about ready. In a few more days we're going to pluck as many of them as possible out so that the critters don't get to them before we do because there are so many beautiful red fruit and I think the birds and stuff will come over and peck at it. Unfortunately I'm going to have to conclude my um, garden tour because I'm getting eaten alive in my legs by mosquitoes. So see you next time. Have a great day and I hope you plant yourself a beautiful garden, lush and full of food for yourself or for the wildlife. Thank you and have a great day. Please like, subscribe, and share.